Hi guys, I'm Dr. Zainab Bora and I'm your educator uh, on an academic platform. Uh, so now we are resuming with the series of A to Z syndromes wherein we are on to letter G now. I've put out these uh, free videos, free short videos on each letter before G and I plan to complete this uh, before your NEET PG exam. So it will be a good idea to uh, just compile all of these syndromes in one place. Um, if you want, I'll post the PDF on the group and then you can compile all of these syndromes in one go and just uh, see all of these videos, revise them on Google. Uh, just before your exam so that I take care of one very heavy chunk of our mind which is based on all of these rare diseases and syndromes but do keep in mind that these are not something uh, which is gonna be a very big part of your exams so you can get uh, you know a few questions from this this and figure in your options will be a good idea to just have them in the back of your mind but don't uh, really stress over uh, these syndromes a lot all right so that is one message but definitely a good idea to just see these videos so that one part of your life is taken care of right so before we begin with letter g uh, just to tell you about plus subscription and academy platform so in plus subscription and in iconic subscription wherein you can combine it with prep ladder you will get unlimited access to both the platforms which is a very good idea for those of you who are you know just starting off your pg preparation so this is what you can check out for the people who are appearing for this year's NEET PG exam, these are all the packages, these are all the batches which are ongoing, um, which are specially targeted, keeping in mind NEET PG exam. And also the question bank is now upgraded with more than 25,000 questions which uh, you can practice. If you want to avail the subscription, whether it's plus or iconic, you can use my code which is ZURA Life. So let's begin with the first disease which is Gorham's disease. So Gorham's disease is also called as vanishing bone disease and those are the only two words that you need to understand the image. The bone literally vanishes. So what we are going to see is, look at the proximal humerus here at the baseline. Eventually what happens over a course of time is a slowly progressive disease. What you will see is there is this permeative destruction of the humerus and eventually look at how it's completely destroyed. So, what is considered to be the pathophysiology is that instead of the bone, what actually proliferates there are these lymphatic slash blood, uh, blood vessels. All right. So this is called as lymphangiomatosis or hemangiomatosis. All right. So either of these two channels, um, when they proliferate within the bone, it's going to destroy the bony matrix. All right. So this is Gorham's disease, vanishing bone. Disease. Then when we talk about golden heart syndrome, this is a triad, right? A triad of three particular anomalies. So here you can see the eyes, so oculo, the ear having this uh, various anomalies like tags, like pits you will be having and the vertebrae are abnormal. So this is a triad of oculo, auriculo, vertebral syndromes. What kind of vertebrae are seen here is something which is important. So you will see these hemi vertebrae so anytime you see this fusion anomaly segmentation anomaly in the vertebrae wherein they appear like this butterfly this is what is called as hemi vertebra or a butterfly vertebra all right so this is the golden hair syndrome then very important we have golden goth syndrome so golden goth syndrome is also referred to by its very very important major criteria which is basal cell carcinoma so this is also called as nevoid basal cell uh, syndrome right and the mutation that we see here is ptch1 gene mutation very very important manifestations will be first multiple basal cell carcinomas secondly there can be multiple okcs what are okcs these are jaw tumors so these are jaw tumors which are called as odontogenic keratocystic lesions so they are odontogenic keratocysts all right that is what we mean by okcs Apart from that, they also have cutaneous manifestations like palmer and plantar pits. You can also notice that they have forks which is calcified, bifid ribs and you can have a primary relative. So these are the major criteria. Apart from that, these are all the various basal cells uh, or the nevi that you are seeing in this particular patient. Okay, so this is what we need to know about Gollingos syndrome. Going ahead to the next one which is called as cancer syndrome. So cancer syndrome is an important psychiatric syndrome, all right, and this is frequently seen with 
this knows this is one previous year questions where they talked about Ganser syndrome. Psychiatric syndromes in particular are very important, right? We have previously discussed Cap, Grass and Fregoli and now we are talking about Ganser syndrome. So this is also called as uh, Warby Reader, not right? What you see here is Warby Reader or something called as pseudo stupidity. So what you see here is Warby Reader literally means approximate answers. So if you ask these patients, what is 2 plus 2? They'll say 5. Alright, so this tells you what? This tells you that they're actually understanding the question. They know that we're talking about numbers, but their answers will be wrong. So this is called as approximate answers or pseudo stupidity. It means they don't really know, have no idea what you're talking about, but they are giving these approximate answers. Okay, so this is what is cancer syndrome, seen in prisoners, Warby Reader is the term that you want to remember here. Next is important from neurological aspect which is the Gerstmann syndrome. So Gerstmann syndrome occurs when there is any insult to this area which is the inferior parietal lobule or the angular gyrus of the dominant lobe, alright, of the dominant hemisphere. What happens is a, a quadrat of four features. So what are those four features which are seen here? First is agraphia, right? Second is a calculia where there is a problem in calculation. Third is right left disorientation. And fourth feature that you see here is basically going to be finger agnosia wherein they cannot identify the fingers that you are pointing at them. So these are the four manifestations of the Jostman syndrome that you need to know. The area here is very very important. Alright, so this was it. Next time I'll see you all with the uh, letter H. So I hope this was useful. Do drop in your feedback which only uh, helps us improve and give some positive reinforcement or uh, your negative feedback which only makes me improve. So thank you so much and I'll see you all soon. Bye.